welcome all the listeners students this session is totally on the antenatal care in fact the spread of this antenatal care is so wide that it starts at the time of conception if not preconceptionally and till the lady delivers of the baby so we have conveniently divided this topic into two sessions antenatal care in the initial visit and antenatal care in the subsequent visits okay this is how the sessions are divided now let us just ponder over a few questions pregnancy is a physiological state isn't it so why do you need an obstetrician first of all is there a need pregnancy childbirth it goes on and on it's happening from times immemorial from the time of adam and eve it is happening so do you need an obstetrician for all these things why do we need to give a prenatal or antenatal care when it is physiological what is the need left alone can't the pregnant woman progress in pregnancy and deliver uneventfully yes let us try to answer it it has been estimated that out of 100 pregnant mothers about 85% of them will fit into what i just now explained that they will progress uneventfully and deliver uneventfully 85% of them will have no issues at all so we always call them low risk people i'll come to the terminology explanation little later why should i call them low risk when there is no risk let me tell you little later around 15% of the pregnant mothers can have associated medical issues or can develop some of the problems that are unique in pregnancy and become high risk so 15% of the pregnant mothers will go for a high risk but what is the unfortunate fact here unfortunate fact is that we are not able to predict who is high risk there is a specific group of women in whom you can identify the high risk factors but in most of them no risk factors in the beginning but as the pregnancy progresses they can develop some risk factors or sometimes even during labor new risk factors can creep in so it is unpredictable risk may appear most often in labor right so a very vigilant attitude both in the antenatal period and during labor is warranted and that is how you can pick up the high risk factors and act accordingly once high risk factors are picked up what can you do you can try to rectify it you can try to manage the situation you can try to avert the complications see the risk factor is there risk factor can lead to some grave complication just one example you have identified hypertension and if you don't manage her properly she can end up with eclampsia so you can definitely avert the complication and with all these things totally we aim at optimizing the outcome so we use this this is what i said i am going to come little later that is in pregnancy every pregnant woman unless otherwise proved you should call them as risky pregnancies but you have the prefix as low risk and high risk when you identify some risk factor it becomes a high risk pregnancy when you have no risk factor at the time of your examination it is a low risk pregnancy students there is no concept like no risk pregnancy in fact if you just try to talk to the elders very aged people at home there is always a saying that pregnancy and childbirth are like rebirth for the mother this is what the elders say at home and it is a 100% true statement that if a woman becomes pregnant so uneventfully progressing in pregnancy uneventfully delivering may be really a very very fortunate event in the life of a woman anything can happen this is what 
is expected hence there is no concept of no risk pregnancy so it is always a low risk pregnancy or high risk pregnancy so now in that case what are the purposes with which you give the antenatal care students we also use the word prenatal care for antenatal care but you know prenatal care is something which comprehensively involves the preconception care post conception care up to the time of delivery okay so antenatal care is you try to find out are there any high risk factors so for this it is very important to meticulously take the obstetric history if you just listen to the session on obstetric history taking and the session on obstetric examination you will understand how your examination and history taking would help you to pick up the high risk factors continued care to pick up evolving factors this is what i said in the first interview you may get a couple of factors but if you keep having a vigilant attitude towards that pregnant woman you will be able to pick up in the subsequent visit also the factors that come up as new factors treat the risk factors once you find them you have to treat for example anemia optimize the risk factor so you have found that there is a diabetes mellitus or she evolves with gestational diabetes mellitus see it is not totally curable like anemia you correct the hemoglobin and you are perfectly fine but in diabetes even if you control the blood sugars she should be continued on the medications to see that the condition remains at an optimum level so optimize the conditions in situations like diabetes or hypertension prevention of grave complications like eclampsia tetanus so these some of the measures that you take would prevent some of the grave complications of the things associated with pregnancy and antenatal care and a vigilant attitude will also very very effectively help us to time the delivery and also decide about the route of delivery should i deliver her right now at 34 weeks or can i wait till 38 weeks or should i deliver her vaginally or should i deliver her by cesarean route these things could be decided with a case which has had a good antenatal care and early diagnosis of unhealthy babies this is one more very crucial thing we kept on talking so much about mothers but the fetus also could have lot of issues like growth problems anomalies right abnormal growths so all these things could be picked up if you have a good antenatal care schedule and also decide about some interventions maybe diagnostic interventions and sometimes even therapeutic interventions you know the intra uh, uterine fetal therapy is really evolving in a very big way nowadays and say intra uterine transfusions can be given to the baby to treat anemia and also in conditions of say twin to twin transfusion syndrome intra uterine fetal surgeries are being done so the uh, obstetrics has evolved so much that early diagnosis and proper treatment can really bring a lot of joy to the whole family in terms of a healthy mother and a healthy baby and this is the time wherein you also have an option to discuss with the woman her reproductive goals how many children she want to have when she wants to limit her family and sometimes it could be an unwanted pregnancy or unexpected unplanned pregnancy wherein she needs termination so from the initial visit if there is a continue continued care even pregnancy termination uh, decisions could be very favorably taken in the women so now coming to identification of risk factors so when we talk about identification of risk factors the risk factors could be pre existing already existing like she comes with a mitral stenosis non modifiable you can't do anything to 
uh, change that particular problem. For example, she has a very bad kyphosis of the spine. So you can't do anything with that. But she is a high risk patient and say previous two caesarean section. So it is a high risk factor and you can't do anything with that. So it is non-modifiable. So the risk factor could be modifiable. So modifiable risk factor is say she comes to you with diabetes mellitus, she comes to you with anemia. So even in the preconception period or early in conception, you can treat her anemia and modify the situation. You can bring down the blood sugar level and see that she is in a very favorable situation to conceive. So risk factors could come up in labor. In labor, it could be uh, antepartum hemorrhage, sort of obstructed labor, threatened rupture of the uterus. So these are the other risk factors and of course even postpartum hemorrhage. And the risk factors could be appearing only in pregnancy. After 20 weeks of gestation, you can notice her to be hypertensive which is called the uh, gestational hypertension or preeclampsia. Then she can develop gestational diabetes mellitus, gestational thrombocytopenia. So all these things are unique to pregnancy. Most of them just resolve after she delivers. So delivery is the treatment for many of these conditions. So the ones which are appearing in pregnancy and appearing in labor, the pre-existing ones and the other way you can call them is modifiable and non-modifiable. So just a list of risk factors that could be uh, found out by taking a good history and a good examination. So if you look at the demographic aspect of the mother, so adolescent pregnancy and elderly pregnancy, both are high risk ones. Socioeconomic state directly or indirectly would influence the outcome of pregnancy. So they are also the risk factors.